And, and then now is the family like, oh, Hanny's Everyone, back. Everyone, as soon as I quit, it's like, Hanny is like this he's and dead. this. He's like, Daya, he's lost. <laughs> he's lost. Now, like, my parents are like, yeah, Mashallah. Hanny has a law firm. Way like, better for, than before. Way right? better. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. As always, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. It's your boy Abbas Wahab. Uh, if you're in Toronto, come out October 21st to the Force Diversity Comedy Show. And check out for tickets on AbbasWahab.com. Next week, I will be announcing a national comedy tour along with myself and comedians Jesse Singh and Mo Smile. Look out for that, Canada. We coming for y'all. But with me today in the studio, first time on the immigrant section, I'm happy to have this dude. He's got a platform. He's had me on. Founder and creator of something called Yellow Let's Talk. My guy, Hani El Dejani. What are you saying, bro? Hey, how's it going, homie? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having a rhyming name. That's I love starting an episode <laughs> with a rhyming name, bro. I, it's a good feeling, you know? Love it, man. I got you. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, just call me Al, Hanny Al. It's like you've ruined the whole vibe. I know, right? <laughs> What's going on, my guy? Welcome, welcome. What do you think of the... It's not as fancy as yours. My boy's nah, got a bro. nice setup, man. Bro, you got Dragon Ball Z. Like, this is some elite shit right here. I love it. I love when someone comes and has an appreciation for the Dragon Ball Z. You got to appreciate DBZ. Did you, you watch it all? Everything, man. Everything? Except Super for like... Two? Super, which one? Is, okay. Super's the new one. Okay, the new one, I watched it. I was like, like I started watching it even like Japanese like dub. Yeah. And then I just, I just got out of it. Yeah. So I don't know. Too much like, going on these too days. Too much huh? going on. You're a creator, bro. You got a whole platform <laughs> now. You can't watch Super. You can, but you know what? I'm doing a lot of shit. I made time for the Universe Martial Arts Tournaments, all right? I made time. Okay, yo, the Martial Arts Tournament... Okay, I want you to tell me what, how it ended because I might have watched it. Is there anything past Let's the Let's just say this. Goku wins. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> the rule of thumb. You know? <laughs> Usually that's the ending. But it was sick, man. It's so worth watching. I just love the world martial. Did you watch Dragon Ball as well? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, see, they nailed the martial art tournament. They did. In Dragon Ball, they did a bunch of times. Dragon Ball Z was our favorite part. They did it in the dead world. And then in Super, they do it in the universe. It's just like there's yeah. a lot of stuff that happens. I'm just waiting for the... The martial art tournament saga. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's like, I don't know about you, but as a kid, all I wanted to do was martial arts. I wasn't good, but I did. I wanted to do it. I, oh, my God, man. I Don't even get me started on that, bro. I love the love I have for... Do you grow up here? Yeah, yeah. Do you have YTV? Of course. Carlos and Sugar, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to them. Shout out to all... That's how. That's the first place. That, but it used to be one episode a week, man. That shit was the worst. I know now. Be powering up through three weeks, <laughs> you I, know. I know. Imagine like the suspense from that and the cliffhanger for that whole oh, entire week. I can't. I can't. That's too much. Yeah. It built us, you know. The the men we are today is because of Piccolo. Piccolo. Vegeta. Piccolo, yeah, bro. I miss Piccolo. He's like the calm guy. He's, he's the, the calm guy. Yeah, the you're the Piccolo. Yeah, I'm you'd the be piccolo. a Piccolo. Yeah. I just be meditating all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Floating a little bit, right? Like, Love yeah. it. He's Which one higher. would you be? I, I'd be Goku. <laughs> You'd be Goku. <laughs> no, just like, I, I would be Vegeta. Fucked up hairline, anger issues. I would for sure be Vegeta. You know what I mean? <laughs> just jealous, envious, rotten to the... that. I would be... And I'd always be... I'm the prince of all sands. I would for sure be Vegeta, but like a sore loser. Vegeta. Yeah. You I seem don't too have happy that, to like, be Vegeta. Yeah, maybe a cross between Goku and Vegeta. Maybe I'm a Gohan, you know? Because Gohan ended up becoming like kind of like an engineer. Like a sign. That is very true. Right? Yeah, I have you're a go on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I'm a go on. Yeah, I can see you as a go on. Dante, you think I'm a go on? <laughs> well, I. Like, it, we're not recording on anything. No, we are recording. I'm. I'm yeah, yeah, my boy Dante. <laughs> we got a mic. We got a mic. Um, I think. Yeah, you would definitely be a Gohan because you start started out doing your thing and then you became an engineer. You're like, you know what? Enough of this engineering stuff. Let me go back to fighting people or doing comedy. So it's definitely a Gohan. Like I killed Cell and I was like, exactly. yeah, I'm going to go to Waterloo. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe leave Waterloo and go back and fight some other people. But once he killed Cell, it was done. Yeah. For Gohan, it was it's all over. Yeah. But Super yeah. Saiyan 2 Gohan. This Damn. guy's like here. He's like, what the fuck is this podcast? No, 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 bro. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is life right there. This is like bringing me back to like... The best days of my life. Bro. DBZ, YTV. Show up in recess. Everyone's like, oh, I can't, man. Hey, huh, oh, man. my God. Everyone Good was on it, man. Good times. DBZ, Yu-Gi-Oh! And wow. Digimon. Yu-Gi-Oh! The creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Just that. Digimon, man. Yeah. Digimon such a Pokemon fucking... How did they... As you as a, a lawyer, how did Digimon not get sued? <laughs> I wonder that all the time. 
they just had similar like names, but like it's like a completely different storyline. Uh, I'm sure Pokemon also like copied some something else. Yeah, but they didn't keep the Mon. Imagine that they kept the Mon, the Digimon, the Pokemon. Like, but what does Mon even mean? I don't know. That's Look it up, Dante. It's Mon and it's Monster. 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 So what makes so much sense? Yeah, that would make sense. Like Pocket and then Digi Digital. Was it the same owners? I have no idea. I'm not even too deep into either of them, to be honest. But but you mic'd up real nice, ain't you? Well, because I know it's Mon, and I had a similar question. So it's Mon is for monsters. That's what's up. He knew it right away. Yeah, right. right. He's like, oh, that's actually monsters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, brother man, welcome. Enough of all that. Let's talk about you, my guy. So uh, you brought me onto your podcast. It's, it's like a whole platform. It's called Yellow Let's Talk. We just we da- I dashed in real quick. You got like producers, bro. You have the straight up. That was the immigrant. That was the real immigrant section, bro. You had a bunch of Arabs. Like just there's wires everywhere. I love that operation. That was straight up like small scale very involved i love that shit one guy's like bro you good you need water you're good i was like no i'm, I'm good you you sure you need water it's like no man i'm good bro let's go let's go live <laughs> no thank you thank you for coming to that podcast and uh yeah um, hopefully you got your water yeah, yeah in the end in the end i <laughs> okay, got good, it good. i was pissed off no i'm fucking with you <laughs> by the way come a little closer to the a mic. little closer but how okay. did that how did you start that and can people find that stuff already are you banking these episodes what's going on yes yeah, so we haven't officially released the episodes yet we're trying to like basically re- re- pre-record the season yeah edit and then launch just i, th- I find it, it might be easier at least for the first uh, season but basically yellow Lust stock started like five years ago in the concept of trying to create like this video podcast youtube show where people have different perspectives five years from now or like five years later obviously things evolved shifted and pivoted and we wanted to bring it back to the origin but this time as opposed to having like different perspectives we really wanted to focus on uh, making it something more about like mindset and how do you live your life with purpose so um, that's why the questions were a little more deep you know than uh, than the usual kind of thing I enjoyed it a lot. It was very, yeah. like, thoroughly enjoyed it. You had a comfortable fucking setup. This guy had nice cushions and <laughs> shit. It's a piss off when someone starts a new thing and it's way better than my thing at 200 episode 200. Nah, bro, <laughs> yours is. Bro, my, my ego is. I was there with my legs crossed, all, like, composed. <laughs> ego shattering inside, bro. Nah, bro. The one guy tried to bring me heavy on water. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I changed my response. I don't think you'd be gone. You'd be a trunks with your ego. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm a sword guy, bro. Yo, we're going to figure this out throughout the episode um but no it was a great vibe and uh, we were in and out quick and uh i I wish i could have stayed around longer i had some other shit to do but i was like bro you got to come on this podcast man we'll extend it Uh, bro i appreciated that like i do remember and i do apologize for like things were running a little later but bro you were such good energy and you get like you delivered you understood the assignment as they would say I like that. He understood the assignment. Yeah. That's very military, right? <laughs> he understands the assignments. He doesn't speak a lot, but he understands the assignments. That's sick. Mm. But it's a good vibe, you know? And that's a lot of the shit I talk about. You know, here, I mean, we're just saying, we're just fucking s- s- lollygagging and saying random shit. I don't even know if that's a word, but like, but you know, like the vibe in general that I don't know if I put myself into it, but I kind of have fallen into is the like, follow your dreams shit. It sounds so cheesy when you say it like that. <laughs> follow your dreams, man. You can do whatever you want, man. You know, like all that bullshit. But like, essentially, I did engineering and left and now do comedy. And as a result of it, I'm suddenly an ambassador for this fucking whole transition. And I know specifically you went to law school, did became a lawyer, got your bar. You know, because a lot of people go, I went to law school. It's like, yeah, okay, so you dropped out two years in or whatever. But you did it. And a lot of people assume the same with me. Oh, so you didn't finish it. No, I finished it. And I worked in it. It mm-hmm. just wasn't for me. Like, walk me through. And, and, and anytime I have someone on the first time in the podcast, give me the, like, overarching backstory, you know? I know you were, uh, you said you were born in Kuwait, Palestine. G- yeah, give me the yeah. story from that to doing law school to leaving to, to now pretty much bro you want my whole life story alright bro the last like, time I'll, I had a <laughs> Palestinian guy he goes it started in 1940 bro I swear to god <laughs> <laughs> Karami started he literally st- it was an amazing episode but he started <laughs> with his parents being kicked out of Palestine oh, like, so as long as you don't start that far back okay. we're already good bro okay, so it started in 1992 no. <laughs> there we go okay with your birth I with like my that birth. That's, a, that's, a, that's fresh <laughs> yeah no born and raised in Kuwait uh, Palestinian parents I came here when I was like six years old and came, went back to Kuwait, came back here. You know, typical like, you know, immigrant story. You go back and forth. 
and then came here for university and all I wanted to do was go to law school. So what, what, what how did law first of all, did you have Al Sabah friends in Kuwait? Al Sabah friends, yeah. They're Yo, that's the always. royal family out there, bro. <laughs> there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah. They're all just getting checks in the mail. Right, yeah. Were there there's different tiers of royalty in these in the Khalij and the Gulf, right? So there's yeah. like a close Sabah to like the head and there's like very like distant ones, right? But I don't know how they differentiate. Like, how do they? How are they able to know? Like, is it just by blood, or is it like? I have no idea. I imagine the closeness to the king. Yeah, that right. Be it, probably if the first cousins probably yeah. better. The kids are the best. Then yeah. the first cousins are, then second cousins, and then it's always the very distant ones who cling to it the hardest. <laughs> you know? Absolute facts. Right, facts. It's like, bro. I'm Sabah. It's like, yeah, bro. You're a fucking 18th <laughs> removed cousin, bro. bro. Sabah, bro. That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, how did law? Like, when did that get in your head? The one did lot. Of, I'm just thinking, I'm like, uh, just about the Sabah. I was like, I always wondered. I was like, what if someone just goes to like the U.S. or Canada and just changes their last name to Al Sabah and go back? And they'll be treated like royalty. Yeah, they're like, right? how are you connect? They're at the function. Yeah, it's like, how are you exactly? Oh my, it's a good question. <laughs> you, know, you start the Uncle Abdullah, Uncle Abdullah from Mahmoud's side. They're like, what? <laughs> it's complicated, man. All yeah. I know is Alhamdulillah, we are here. <laughs> I know, right? And we are rich. And he's like. Mashallah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take me we're Yeah. Uh, but so, sorry, keep going. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say, so that you're answering your question, like, how how did I get into law? Or yeah, what? What was, you're like, all I wanted to be was a lawyer. Yeah, so why did I want to, why did I want to go to law school? Funny enough, like, I had, like, aspirations to, like, for human rights and labor rights, and that's all I wanted to do. And so, but then I studied business in undergrad, but then I did grad school in industrial relations, trying to, like, go more into the labor movement. So you did a master's. I did a master's, typical immigrant story. Just kept collecting them degrees. Oh, yeah. Honey, <laughs> mashallah, and do magister. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just collecting. And then and then law school. What, what, did you resent your time in the undergrad? Were you actually, like, in love with the like what you were learning? Yeah, no, I loved it. Business was fun. I loved uh, I loved school. And, uh, like, like especially what I was studying. Because it was more, like, project-based. Yeah. And my program was small. So it was, it was good stuff. So you didn't do MBA. You went to this thing instead. Huh? Yeah. Why not MBA? So, yo, so... So when it came to applying for law school, I did my LSAT. I was like, okay, doesn't look like I'm going to go to law school this year, but I need to yeah. figure out yeah. something I'm going to do this year. So I looked at the applications, and then I saw this this master's, and I'm like, oh, my TA has the same master. So I talked to her, and she's like, most people who go in this, uh, this master's program, they end up becoming labor and employment lawyers. She, like, sold me on the program. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, sounds incredible. So I applied for it. It was also one year, and I didn't need to do like, like I didn't need two years experience or anything. And honestly, it was the best decision. It was I a made. good move. It was a really good move. Even though I don't really like practice anything to do with the grad school, but like the people I met there were awesome. And I think that's what, uh, in my opinion, what like grad school is about. Like who you meet. Gotcha. Did, did anyone else there have law school ambitions? Yeah. So like my previous like co-founder, business partner, I met him. And uh, and, and the masters. masters, and then we went and built a law a law firm together. Oh yeah, yeah. and that's what's uh, running now. That's what's running now. Sick. Okay, so take me from there to so now you did that for a year. You had to do the LSAT again. I had to do the LSAT again. You got a better mark this time. I got a better mark. And now you have some options. I had some options. And where'd you go for school? So I went to University of Ottawa. Ottawa. Okay. All right. Is that Carlton or is this university is separate? No, no. It's yeah. just the University of Ottawa. Oh. Yeah. Did you have a good time up there? Fucking the cold. Fucking shit, Ottawa? fuck, man. It was too cold. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. It wasn't too bad. Right. I feel like with law school, you're just there in the library and like. Yeah. What is the vibe of law school? See, I know engineering school, and all I know from law school is like you know like suits and I just are you guys in class in blazers? Are you guys wearing blazers in class? No, nah, bro. <laughs> I was like <laughs> in my like sweatpants and everything. So the vibe of law school first year is pretty intense, I would say. Like everyone's trying to just, it's like a new language. Yeah. And um, like, so it's, it's extremely intense. Therein, they teach you that therein. Therein. That's anytime I read yeah. a contract. <laughs> so fucking law, do they purposely complicate these contracts for you to have to involve a lawyer? I think so. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, anytime I read these contracts and I'm like Google, uh, like a, yeah. a long time ago, I'd be super scared. But now I've dealt with so many contracts that yeah. I'm not scared anymore because I know like you're going to be Googling a bunch of words and they just have the most layman's terms synonyms. It's like they use they complicate this on purpose. Like me as an artist, I released a comedy album recently. Yeah. And the way you collect royalties and everything is a web- website called Sound Exchange. 
and you go on, you claim your your uh, the tracks, you claim that you own whatever percentage of the copyright, you did the copyright, you produced whatever, all these chunks. But the website itself is set up such that the artist would not be able to navigate it. Really? I had to be in forums. I had to, The website is set up in a way that you need a management team to, to, to navigate it. You need an agent or whatever the fuck to navigate these things. Because mm -hmm. they don't want the artist to just go in there and do it. They don't want to make it that easy because then that makes their field not required, right? So yeah. I'm like, is is that the same shit happening with these fucking lawyers? They're just complicating the hell out of these contracts. Uh, yo, honestly speaking, I I don't think so. You're because like, yes. <laughs> By the way, use I'll, my law firm. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this because like, there's even even in law school they like teach you like the best contracts and the best lawyers are the ones who who are able to convey in the most simple terms and the other people can understand, right? So this is like a if anything, it's probably you're not having the most effective communication. And when it comes to like the, that platform, bro, go to like their customer support, let them know, be like, yo, this is not accessible. And no, I, I, I did it in the end. Like did I, it? Okay. I'd be on forums, I'd be on this, yeah. I'd be on that. I figured it out in the end, but I'm like, and I have an engineering degree. Yeah, so I'm a smart like, guy. I'm a smart guy, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm not like a genius, but, I, but I'm just like, I may have an easier time with this than the average artist will say that yeah. like, just been doing art, whatever, right? So I'm just like, man, this thing, this whole thing is being is set up in a way to, to but make bro, it. But bro, I'm impressed that you actually are reading it and like trying to do your research about it. A lot of people will just be like, oh, terms and conditions, boom, approve. And then they're like, fuck, what did I do? Oh, like so. with anything Apple related, anything on the phone, what yeah. choice do we have? I just fucking scroll down, <laughs> click approve. But I'm talking about like if I get hired to do something mm -mm. or if I'm doing A, B, and C, or if I pull a contract online. Yeah. Uh, that like they're like provide us with a contract, so I just go pull a blank contract and try to customize it for what I'm doing. Then you're reading all the clauses and shit like that. I've done that so many times now that I'm like, it doesn't scare me anymore. But I'm just like, man, once you Google all these words, yeah. I'm like, they could have just said it like, all liabilities on you mm -hmm. if A B C. But it's like in the event of indemnification and <laughs> you're like, what yeah. the fuck is this saying? Yeah, they're in. They love that. They're in. They're in. <laughs> so I have good news for you. So like the whole like premise of the law firm Emerge Law is to try to make law more accessible. So we even have I'm like plug it's called in. Emerge Law. Yeah, it's Emerge Law. And people that would like, what kind of law do you guys practice? So it's like you name it. What whatever you, you know, <laughs> whatever you need. What? <laughs> whatever you need. Yeah, yeah. but mostly corporate law, like yeah. corporate law and some entertainment. Yeah. But what we're trying to do now is, and we're launching this like any day. It's called Emerge Light. And basically, it's you can incorporate there, uh, you can automate contracts, and we have a whole database as well for content creators and people in as creatives because we noticed there is a gap, and this is now 2022 where a founder could be a creative and could be a content creator, could be a comedian, and then the third thing is connecting with lawyers, and we're trying to make it as accessible as possible. So like Emerge Light, check it out. Hell yeah, man! That's <laughs> awesome. That's actually. Like, that's huge, you know? As someone who does go online and try to find, like, blank, like, template contracts and I'm customizing, that's actually really cool. That's really cool. And for the most part, though, on the corporate law, who who are your clients? Like, is it, like, actual bigger companies or it's mostly, like, smaller, like, sole proprietorships? Or, like, what's the situation? Yeah, so I would say, like, I uh, deal with three types of clientele. Like, the first one is, like, your typical like tech startup, you know, they're either trying to get investment around and I'm assisting them on that. The second one would be more like small businesses. Mm. So anybody, let's say who has, I'm trying to think would be, the first client that I had actually was like a flower shop, for example. So like, that's like one example. And then the third clientele that I had. <laughs> like what, if like someone were, pricks their hand uh, with a No, rose. no, no, they were, buying a, they were buying a flower oh, store. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, imagine. Yeah, but like they're suing like crazy. <laughs> I was not funny. aware that there would be pricks on the stem yeah. of the rose. We want everything. That so funny. We want everything. Yeah. Emotional damages. Oh Emotional God. damage. Would, I can't sleep without thinking. <laughs> Yo, you'd be surprised. I'm sure someone had a case like that before. Oh, man, right? dude. There's law cases is everything. just ballet, dude. Now that Facts. It's just fucking ballet, Facts. bro. Facts. And then the, the third clientele, actually, I would say there's another one as well, is dentists. I do a lot of work with dentists. Yo, bro, dentists are the best entrepreneurs I've dealt with. They're hustling. They're always doing things. They're always they're, looking for new clients. They're always looking for new clients, new businesses. So I deal with a lot of dentists. And the fourth one is something now I'm starting to develop more, is more in entertainment. Yeah, okay. Right? 
Hell yeah, yeah, man. We may talk offline. You I, know? Got you, I got you. I got you. It's like, yo, uh, no charge? <laughs> I like, got oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but uh, so, so in that period of you went to law school, because I know you had a, you had like a, a you went, you're like, fuck this. You did some stuff. You came back. Yeah. So what ended up happening, like, like I said, I always wanted to do law. Like that was like my what I was very and like passionate about and thought I really wanted to do it. And then I was like in law and I was like, fuck, this is not what I thought. I was like, you know, when you're working for something and you're kind of like going up the mountain and you're, you just want to see what the, what's on top of the that view. mountain, the view. Yeah. And, and then you get there and it's like, this is really bad. This yeah. is not what I thought it was going to be. The and climb was way better than this. The climb know? was way better. Yeah. And the reality of it is what, the firm I was working with, like, love the people, but it wasn't conducive for me. Like it was the area that I was thought I was very passionate about labor and employment, which when I was practicing it, I was not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> By the way, my little brother took labor studies and he was like, wants to do the LSAT to pursue that. Really? Yeah. S tell me right now what you thought it would be and what did it end up being? Okay. Cause you may hear this. Listen okay. Hamoudi. Hamoudi, this one's for you. So some people are in it. They love it. So I thought it was going to be a lot of it was going to be, more towards advocacy and it is yeah but to get to that actual advocacy stage uh it's like there it's are a lot of slip and falls actually that's injury uh, yeah. no 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 it's not slip and falls like there's still you still have to work under someone for quite a for quite some time what are we talking 10 years five years it depends depends on the kind of files you want and the files that i was seeing it's not something i was really interested in because a lot of it when it comes to labor and employment it goes to arbitration it doesn't really go to court gotcha and uh, so that's where they're just like appealing or something they're What's appealing arbitration, arbitration is kind of like an like a alternative to court so if you're in a union setting then you don't it's like a conference room we don't go to court we'll handle it here so so kind of so uh, arbitrator is like your alternative to a judge a lot of times you put arbitration clauses in contracts, even in a commercial setting, because like going to court is extremely costly. So, yeah. so for like union settings, well, this is where labor is, mm. not so much employment where it's just a contract yeah. between a person. Um, everything goes to arbitration. And I saw the arbitration process and like collective bargaining and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't for me. That's gotcha. like as easy as it was. But I thought, it, I didn't think it was labor and employment wasn't for me. I thought law wasn't for me. Gotcha. Right? So I was so like, you didn't realize, you're like, you just didn't like the door you walked into, but there's many doors. Exactly. And you're like, fuck all these doors. <laughs> exactly. And I didn't, I personally didn't like working in a law firm. I didn't think the way that a lot of law firms operate are like. As someone who doesn't know, yeah. paint the picture for me. You come in every day in a suit, like the show Suits. Yeah. There's everyone. La, 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 I am not listening. La, 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 la. I'm sued. He's getting sued. <laughs> yeah, that's a careful lawyer right there. Uh, I did not say that. Uh, I Off the record. Uh, but like you show up every day in a suit. Yeah. Uh, like there's it, like suit and tie is dress code. So uh, this is a, this is the thing I didn't realize when I was in law school. So the, the more junior you are, the more dressed up you are. So if you're like an articling and like a first or, or second year associate or a junior associate, you're you wearing a full square, yeah, <laughs> yeah, full yeah. suit. Yeah. You're a senior partner. You're coming in with like you know some just just it jeans and a shirt. It Same with investment banking, by the way. Even though the higher yeah. they get on the finance end, they can afford more and they like to look good. But like if you show up not looking great, it's not a big deal. Whereas the lowest level people have to check off the presentation. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have to have that. You can't just be like. Man, that l young guy in sweatpants is such a go-getter. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can't be in sweatpants. Yeah, which, uh, yo, not going to lie. I think that's such a big waste of time because it took me like so long to try to get ready, iron my fucking shirt and my pants just so I can go to and actually do some work. Um, but so, it's supposed to build discipline, you know? Get I don't a good know. crease. I don't want a lawyer unless they have a tight crease well, that's, in their pants. Well, that's what uh, a lot of... Uh, Kind of like the rhetoric in the law community. It's like, oh, if I don't wear a suit, like, how do you justify paying for those costs? I'm like, bro, it's justified by do you doing good work. That's yeah. my philosophy, 100%, right? hundred percent, yeah. So. Like if I, from my one of my best friends, uh, Jawad, sells cars. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he sells um, high-end Range Rovers in London. If, you know, if you're looking for a Range Rover in the southwest of Ontario, hit up uh, London, Ontario, uh, Land Rover Jaguar. I don't know if they're together anymore, but still, hit them up. As for Jawad or Mosahyun, they'll hook you up. But uh, 
But like those guys get dressed like crazy car sales, right? But at the end of the day, you get usually they will get referred to by someone else who did close with them. So if you bought a Range Rover and had a great experience with Jawad, and I'm and I want a Range Rover, and you're like, yo, go work with Jawad, and I show up in Jawad's in sweatpants. I don't care. I'm not gonna be like, yo, give me the next guy in the suit. I'm gonna go to the guy that ga- that that gave a personal reference. So you're right. It's the work speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. It's not how you look. But for new clients who did not get referred, looking good will go the way though. So it's like for pros- for new clients, you gotta dress well. But for existing like clientele, it the work speaks for itself. So it's it's kind of double edged sword in that way. Yeah, so like for me, because now I kind of like defining this new culture of this law firm, you know, with my team, it's uh, it's got to dress, obviously dress nicely, but dress as comfortable as you want. So there's some days I'm wearing jeans and a shirt. Some days I'm wearing a suit. It's really depends. Um, as, to me, it's as long as you're doing the good work, you know, your, your clients trust you, you know them, then boom. And what are the hours like in a law firm? Okay, so when I was working at my previous law firm, and again, I can't speak for every single law firm, but again, it's articling and junior was Retirement. pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. Because, and here's the thing, it's not because the law firm was asking you to do all these hours. Like now that I think about it in hindsight, I'm like, why the fuck did I stay like till this late at night? Because the culture implies it. Exactly, you know? exactly. Because they, they're they like, here is this research memo, and you're like, I want to give the best memo of my fucking life. And so you put in all these extra hours to try to make it amazing. Or if they're giving you an assignment, you want to be extra. What the hell is a memo? A memo, like a memo. So I know what a memo is, but like as far as for law. For law. So in this context, it's like a research memo. So let's say like a partner would be like, can you research the case law on this question? And then you'd have to go into like the database, read cases. yeah. Yeah. And try to put together like something that's you know, starts off with like, here's a short conclusion of what I've what I've concluded. And then here are all the cases that builds it on. So this is that scene in every lawyer movie where he's in a library late as fuck with books stacked up against like a lot of books stacked. And they're like looking at all the reference cases and shit. This is. Yeah. But you know what's what's so funny? It's like everything is now digital. So I have no idea why they have these books. Like sometimes maybe there's one or two. Because it looks books. good on the I camera. Know, hand here, right? A database doesn't look good. The camera's not going to pick that up. Look right? at how we scroll. It's just a montage of you <laughs> scrolling like crazy. Now that's a real lawyer. But uh, so stupid hours, like at the beginning. At the beginning, I, like at least my experience wasn't the best hours, right? It wasn't uh, like it wasn't really like here's some good work life balance. At the same time, I will say this: if you enjoyed it, like yo, now I work like probably even longer. More, but yeah. I fucking love what I do, yeah. so it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, exactly. Right? You so. love what you want to get to work exactly yes exactly yes. whatever needs to be done needs to be done exactly so relative to what you originally thought you go in it's more dressy than you thought the hours are longer than you would have thought what i want to know is the higher ranking people what are they talking about are they all like talking about the cottage and vacationing are they talking about retiring are they like what is, what is the general conversation in the office is everyone like talking about their porsche or are they talking about like cases like, what are they talking about? So I will say this. When it comes to, like, traditional big law, like, on Bay Street, there tends to be a certain crowd that gets attracted to that uh, type of culture. And there's a, a certain crowd that tends to climb up higher in the in the corporate ladder. Is it kind of like suits? Is the people who, like, is it is people depicted in the show suits? I wish it was as cool as uh, the people in suits. It was, like, mostly, like, you know, these uh, older guys who would be talking about the cottage. But lovely guys, like yeah. there's nothing. Good like, people, yeah. Really good people. Yeah. But again, it was one of those things, like also being like ethnic, like I wasn't really represented in the law firm, at least in the top, the top. Uh, I the guess, echelon. Like, yeah, yeah, like you don't really see partners who are uh, ethnic like you. So all like the small talk would be like talking about hockey or cottages, which, yo, you know, I can appreciate like a hockey game, but I don't really fuck with hockey or yeah, a cottage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Kuwait. <laughs> yeah. My family can't go back to Philippines. <laughs> it's not even on Google Maps anymore. They're like, that handy guy is really, he's stressed out. He needs a cottage weekend. He needs a cottage weekend. <laughs> he needs a cottage weekend. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So it was very Canadian white collar vibes. Yeah. Gotcha. That's pretty much what I would expect. So you're overdressed. You're overworked. The vibe doesn't really speak to you. And you're doing that for how long? 
Oh, bro, I lasted like 10 months. I okay. was like, I was like, I can't do this. And, and, and by what day, like looking back, when did you know, oh, this is like, it's probably like two weeks in, maybe a month in th- that you're like, oh, this is bad. But you're like, no, of course, I'm going to push through this. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So here's the thing, because like the way the law school kind of is set up and the whole system is that they really try to push you into that culture of like, yo, you, second year, you need to get an OCI, which is like an on-campus interview that gets you onto Bay Street. From Bay Street, you're articling. And let's say there is five people you're articling with. Three of them will be selected as associate. The other two can fuck off and try to find something else. Gotcha. Right? So, like, <laughs> so this whole entire, like, scarcity, like, they'll t- it makes you really want it. So you don't realize, like, this is what I actually wanted to do or didn't want to do. But it's, they just, yeah, they just, like, it's a famine mentality. It's no yeah. question of, like, will you love this? It's like, there's, all, there's only two spots. Keep your head down run straight type of deal exactly and because it's such a, there's limited spots they really make you value or th- at least perceived value right because not everybody can be in the same position as you and they make it seem like this is the best law firm out there but then for me i realized i didn't want that was it maybe i think around like uh like april ish and when it was around time where they're gonna start making decisions and i'm like i really was not happy and i didn't want it like possibly take a seat from someone who actually wanted who to be it. there, yeah. right? So I was like, so I went in and I was like, I want to explore other opportunities. Yeah. I don't want to pursue law anymore. What did they say? The the guy was a little surprised, and he's like, you "Were know, you a shoe in? Do you think?" I don't know. I don't. To be honest, the yeah. two guys I was with were incredible, so probably not. Yeah, but <laughs> they're like, "Oh, that yeah. makes my life much easier." <laughs> I don't have to fire you. <laughs> Literally, you. yeah. Any, thank you, buddy. <laughs> You just made my day. Exactly. Now I got my mind clear at the cottage this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. They're like, yes, that makes our life a lot easier. But then how are we going to tell those two guys that they made it, you know? <laughs> when you look back at this moment, do you feel like proud? Like, fuck yeah, that was the exact right move to make. Yeah, because it was p- probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Because leaving something with so that's so certain and that was so hard to get to being like, yeah, that's not what I want to do and not really knowing what you wanted to do after that. So that's what made it really difficult. I will say this, we're a little surprised after a few months, I came back, I'm like, yeah, I started my own law firm. <laughs> so they're like, hey, <laughs> I thought you didn't want to do law anymore, so. So it just, it just took a couple of months for you to realize that it was the arbitration and all that bullshit that you didn't care about. Yeah. What happened in that couple months? So it wasn't. You're like, I, honestly, I went to the cottage. <laughs> I went to the cottage, that's exactly what. <laughs> I think I did Figured go to the cottage. everything out in the cottage. <laughs> So what happened was, so I was like, okay, I don't want to work in a law firm. I don't want to do labor and employment. I really like fucked with working with startups and entrepreneurs. I love that energy. Like all I used to do, even when I, when I was articling and in law school was go to these workshops, try to learn as much about startups and like just that creativity was always like what- There's uh, an energy there. Yeah. There's an energy, yeah. right? That just, I gravitated towards. And so, it's the opposite of corporate energy. It's like life. It's, it's li- like this life. And and I've got my own beef with startups. I worked in Silicon Valley for like a year in okay. a startup. I know that mm-hmm. I've got my own beef with those fucking startups. It's a whole nother problem. But at least from the point of view of like coming from like this corporate arbitration stuff, there's like lifeblood. There's energy. There's like excitement. There's no ex- – I imagine there's no excitement when you're doing like – collective bargaining agreements and like some people yeah. get super excited about They're that like, we're gonna get such a good deal guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally literally i remember that one person said the same exact thing and i was like bro i was like i'm over guys that. dental is coming <laughs> dental <laughs> you know what I mean? literally yeah like there's it's not the same you know because the startup people think they can take over the world yeah. and like they're going to mm-hmm. fucking be the next Elon Musk and there's this next shit there. But it's cool that you mentioned like about your experience with Silicon Valley because I do think there's some truth to it. Like whatever we do, like we see, you know, when we're in school, we see the corporate world and we're like, yeah, that's so sexy and we want to get Money. in there. Yeah. And then when we're in the corporate world, we're like, fuck, look at these entrepreneurs. They have the freedom and it's so sexy. And then you go become an entrepreneur and then you see like, like content awesome. creators and yeah. you're like, damn, look what they're doing. They're having a good time. So it's always like, you know, it's all about perspective. Yeah, the grass is always green on the other side, they say, right? Yeah. But without a doubt, though, I mean, like, there's no comparison to those 10 months versus now. There's no comparison, right? Absolutely not. Like, yeah. like So it's like it can f- for sure in the most tangible ways be better. 
It's not just like, oh, but there was job security back then. It's like, no, there's no scenario where I would go back to that. Not in a million years. I think one of the hardest decision was going in and saying I didn't want to do this was one of the best decisions I've ever made, hands down. Because in those months, um, what made me what it made me do was reflect on exactly what I wanted to do and was like, I was kind of in a way like in a survival mode as well because I was like, yo, fuck, like what, what am I gonna do in the next few months if I don't actually like, you know, find what I want to do? Like, I can't be, you know, in my. Do you have a bunch of debt? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. law school, bro, ain't yeah. che- ain't cheap. Yeah. But it was like there's there's a student loans aspect, and then there's uh, you know, there's also kind of like that pride as you being someone who like kind of like has been an overachiever yeah, 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 to yeah, be yeah. in a of phase course. in their life, even though it was like three months, <laughs> but it felt I like know. it was like three years. Yeah. Like I am, it's so weird where you like, isn't it, man? It's so weird. Your whole life, you say, I'm going to be a lawyer. And they're like, Hani's going to be a fucking lawyer. He's a smart fucking guy, man. He's doing it. Yo, he's in law school. He made it. He's going to do it. It's almost like you're doing it for all these people. You're doing it for the on the basis that you said, you told everyone you were going to do it. And everyone's amped until the second you make it and now no one is looking anymore. And now you're in the room alone being the lawyer, being the thing that they all, as you were climbing, they were applauding, right? Yeah. As you were climbing. Then you got to the view. The view is terrible, but no one's there anymore. Now it's just you. And now it's like you feel like you let people down if you don't do it anymore, right? Like I did engineering for three years, so it murdered that feeling. Had I left in like months, I would have had a little bit of that feeling like, fuck, I got to explain. But I did it long enough that I was like, yeah, like there's no scenario where I'm going back to this. And like, fuck all these people. Like so many of my friends are engineers and depressed. So like I see the other side. We were all like doing the same thing. They're going to be engineer. They're going to be engineer. <laughs> and then everyone's gone. And now you're just in an office doing trying to fucking reload AutoCAD. And AutoCAD. Then, you know what I mean? It won't open because there's all the licenses are being used or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. It, once you get to the place, no one is looking anymore. Now it's just you, and 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 you're like, what did I want this for again? Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then it's like the that's a very powerful question. Like, why did I do this, right? And when you don't, when you're not able to answer that, then there's that disconnect. So, what did your family say when you left? Oh, bro, they were like, okay, Hanny's now a failure. Like, it was not, oh, it was not like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you lost your mind, like. like but then I had to kind of like disassociate what they thought with what I was going with your worth with and my stuff. exactly because yeah. I, I knew I was gonna figure it out. Yeah, and I, I just having like that confidence, I think that kind of like pushed me through. Gotcha. Right? So so is it hard to start a law firm or do you just go online and like is it it's just you incorporate and you 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 make a name yeah. and then you get an address but you're working from home I'm assuming. So what ended up happening was I had a friend who is a year older than me, who also did something very similar. And I reached out to him. I was like, like, bro, how did you do this? And this guy blessed me with so much knowledge. He's like, listen, Henny. And I still have that email. He's like, this is oh, what I you're going to. Yeah. He's I like, love that. You know, helping, <sighs> helping people, you know. I hate when, by the way, when did you fall so low? Is the chair going did low? It? What happened? <laughs> Lift that. Yo, why didn't you say anything, Dante? I was like, hey, uh, can you. <laughs> Lean up, see the handle under you. Just yeah. like lift your weight up a little bit, just so yeah. it, it slides up. Cause you're so low here. I might have just like. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's better. Have... This guy was just falling low. I might have just like been like lying down a yeah. little bit. <laughs> in the, you know, in the end, it was like it was the best move of my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> But yo, That's funny. bro, I love it when people give you all the information. I make a habit of doing that now. Yeah. Where so often. People hold information back. You don't want to like be a gatekeeper. It, like it's going, to, yeah. like if I tell him everything, he will compete with, me. like yeah. people have, I don't, and then every now and then you run into someone who will give you every step of what to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, why don't people do that shit? Like, why do we, why are we just l- keep operating in mystery, even though you slowly learned it? Like people ask me like, yo, I want to start a podcast. What? I'm like, yo, listen, I'll tell you everything and what to avoid and what to do and like other people will be like well just you know like listen to this guy i have a when i was recording my comedy special mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i wanted to do uh i wanted to i have to mic the audience right which i should have hired a guy i fucked up you know i should have hired <laughs> a guy and ended up doing it myself i learned some stuff but the audience audio came in too quiet 
But I'm trying to learn what mics to use and stuff. And I asked my one buddy who's a comedian who does this stuff. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm going to mic my own stuff up. Uh, I was just wondering, like, I'm thinking I'll probably end up using these condenser mics. W- what would you do? He, and he tells me until his day blows my mind. He goes, bro, this is literally what I do. So, like, if if you are not going to hire me for it, then, like, I can't. I, like I, I can't tell you. He goes maybe condenser mics, and I'm just like it. Till this day, it blew my mind. I'm like, I'm not trying to start a business and compete with you. I'm trying to do this for my own taping. Yeah. Like this is, I'm not making money off this. I'm just trying to save money. So, and you're telling me he won't even give me mm-hmm. the model, the advice. It blew that blew my mind right there. Like imagine that, blew my mind, dude. So yo, a part of me is like this guy. I don't know if he's a friend, but then a part of me is like, yo, some people are just like that. And I don't get that shit. Like, for me, like, if you have information and you can share that and it can help someone, why not? Like, this is uh, this is how you empower everyone to grow together kind of thing, right? It's been and weird every, with that dude. It's been weird ever since. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Ever since that moment of just, like, maybe condenser mics. But you know what's... And what's, he knew exactly what to do. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? I mean, and I knew him, like, four years before that. That's point. crazy. But you know what, what it, I find funny is that... If, let's say, he was very helpful and you did need to hire someone, he would be the first person. 100%. I'll, in my mind, I'd be like, fuck, I, got, I have to hire him now. Because he helped he you a lot. Yeah. He hooked me up. He, I have to hire would him. Would you hire him now? I, no, now I would never <laughs> hire him. In fact, I have a couple friends who, are, who since have filmed. Yeah. And I know the other guy who I've come to learn does sound and he's a good guy. And I, if I knew he did sound, he would have told me exactly what to do. So now I'm just like, yo, hire that guy. You know what I mean? I'm telling people hire that guy, and I'm like, yo, you know who fucking fucked me over like that? This guy, like, yep. like that's just uh, that shit blew my mind, bro. But uh, but anyways, getting back to your thing, like this guy just broke down he, how to start a law firm. Literally, he's like, these are the type of this is what you need to do. This is the website. This is where you go to law society, and he fucking just blessed me with all that knowledge, and I just started it. And I started it something, and I didn't want to tell anybody. So I had also. Because I was like very involved, like with the community, I had some people come to me and ask me for like, do you know a lawyer? And also when I was getting and volunteering with the startups, a lot of them were like, yo, do you have a referral for a lawyer who can do this and that? And I'm like, yeah. And I would connect them to lawyer friends that I have. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't I just do it? And so what I did, because it was still very like junior, I just got out of articling. I had another guy who blessed me, but I also hired him. He wasn't a friend. He was someone I actually hired. Who was like who was very senior and he would just overlook everything I was doing for the first year to give me that experience. Just to give you the confidence of okay, I'm doing it correct. Yeah, and you need you need that supervision before yeah. you're able to be like, okay, I can do this by myself. Yeah, okay. Right? So So and that guy's no longer involved? Yeah, it's been a couple of years now. Uh-huh. So I, So now you're just you're comfortable. I'm comfortable. If there's something I can do, then I will out. You know, I, I reach will. Out. I'll reach out to the right person, dude. It's just a community-based thing. And, and then now is the family like, oh, Hani's back. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Bro, Hany. I swear to God, everyone. As soon as I quit, it's like Hani is like this he's and dead. this. He's like, oh, he's like, he's like Daya. He's lost. <laughs> he's lost. <laughs> he's lost. Now, like my parents are like, yeah, Hani has a law firm. Way like, better cr- than before. Way right? better. <laughs> Right? Like he has doctor, like he has doctors <laughs> under him for some reason at this law firm. <laughs> he has engineers under him. You know, actually, my one buddy, his parents always, always pushed him to uh, the Pakistani, one of my best friends. The same bullshit. Doctor, engineer. And uh, he went, did like a life sciences degree just because so, that's like kind of doctor. Yeah. And in the undergrad, he decided to drop out to pursue real estate. And I was like, bro, don't do it. Finish your degree. Because I was old school thinking. And, you know, we were like 19 at the time. He drops out. He gets his real estate license. He's been, you know, killing it for 10 plus years. He's like the most go-getter hustler guy I know. Financially, he's in the way better position than any of any engineer I know or even any doctor I know, to be honest. At one point, he was looking at like buying a franchise or something, or opening a, a, a partnering with a doctor to open an actual like full on clinic. And he's like, "Bro, the he's like, bro, I don't know if I want to do this, but my biggest drive to do this is to open it and have a bunch of doctors as employees, just for to fucking tell my parents That's like so I employ doctors. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was literally ego. Is he ended up not doing it, but that's what was pushing him. The idea of having doctors as employees, just to somehow prove it to his parents at the end, like I went the right way. 
Damn, that immigrant parent trauma. It's like it's a story told a thousand yeah. times. <laughs> but that being said, God bless our parents. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah, all <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so that five years you built it, and then was it that couple of months where you were like out and about that you were like, oh, I want to start a platform? Or like, where did that shit come With Yellow Let's Talk? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I actually started Yellow Let's Talk when I was Bring in law Bring that mic a little closer. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I started Yellow Let's Talk when I was in law school. So at that time, I was kind of like, didn't really you know, feel like uh, I fit in any anywhere. You know, I didn't really have like a... A click? Like a, yeah, a squad that was really well represented to like this new culture of like, I don't know, like Middle Eastern, Arab, or, you know, in, in the lost profession, it, there wasn't really a lot of representation. And at the same time, it was like, yo, there's a lot of shit I want to talk about, but no one really wants to talk about. It. So it started off on that idea of being like, let's create a YouTube slash podcast show, right? And then started and it was so bad. Like, I wish it was. Yeah, decent. the operation you have going now, I was very impressed with it. I had to, like, yo, I had to, like, uh, step it up because last time, what ended up happening was, like, uh, the cameras weren't working, yeah, the like microphone. Phone on a tripod. It was so you bad. You were just speaking, you were just like, the the phone has a camera, a microphone. We'll just, it'll be cut in the microphone. Yeah, like yeah no literally. Separate microphone. Literally. Yeah, yeah. And then someone even asked me, it's like, what is this podcast even about? And I'm like, I didn't even know how to answer that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, and then after I the still don't know how to answer. I thought, <laughs> hey, it's immigrants talking shit. Every now and then, YouTube pulls one down. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I love it. But no, like I honestly had no fucking idea, man. And I just remember feeling like, you know what? Let's just do something, right? And so I, I started. Uh, so I was actually in Netherlands on an exchange, and then I reached out to the Canadian Arab Institute, Institute, saying like, hey, can we do an event? And then from that event, it kind of built onto something, and we had a lot of people who came in. You know, I, I met someone who ended up, you know, being my partner with this in a, for a couple of years. Shout out to Mace. And Shout out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then it just started evolving more and more. So it went from like this concept from a YouTube slash podcast show to becoming like this youth led initiative back in the day when I was a youth, where we started like hosting like these cafes events. Then it, you know, had a conference where we brought 400 like, Arab youth under one roof. And then when the pandemic hit, we're like, oh shit, we were doing a lot of events. What do we do? So we started creating these like virtual cafes where we brought people together. And it was incredible at the beginning because like we brought everyone on Zoom. But bro, like fresh energy. Yeah, it was fresh energy. But we did it every single week during the pandemic. By the end of it, I was like, fuck, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> what was it like by the guy? We're still here, guys. I, we're still. <laughs> I loved it. Like I'm just saying that, but like it was, it was a really good opportunity to create a safe space for the community and everything but also during the pandemic what ended up happening is that it reignited this interest in media and bringing it back into like what exactly are we trying to do and everything i was realizing was trying to change the narrative trying to create that new representation because you know what like there isn't really that much here at least in north america of this new culture for like middle eastern or arab diaspora Right. And that everyone can that it can still be inclusive for everybody. Like the best way I look at it is like Latin culture, for example, like you can appreciate it and it's still inclusive, but it still has like its own flavor and its own, you know, its own essence, I would say. Right. Mm, hell yeah, man. Yeah. I'm loving that, dude. When you said diaspora, I'm like, what is I, diaspora? No, I do. I do know what it is, but I'm like, I need to start including that. in when I fill out applications, and diaspora. Shit. that's a good word. <laughs> Leverage diaspora communities. I'll, I'll get every dollar. I out got there, you. Man. I got you. I'll, you know, <laughs> dude, but that's sick. Like, and, and I can tell like what it evolved to because the operation, like me knowing I've done, you know, this is episode 175 ish. So it's been a long evolution. Did it at a studio first, then in a basement, one camera connected to my laptop. Two cameras, studio, better lighting. Now I got a producer. Slowly build, build, build. So then when I walked into your your guys is the one you had set up. I'm like, it reminded me of like it looked like a podcaster, an operation that's been running for years. It looked well, like it'd been running for years. Especially you guys, they had the Black Magic switcher. They had a dedicated switcher. They had a guy that had a green room set up. They had. I'm like, man, this. This is this looks like an evolved operation, which I was very impressed with. No, thank you. Honestly, that's all credit goes to HZM Productions. Has him like he's been incredible, and um, for us, it was working with the Canadian Arab Institute to, to launch this. Obviously, it's still it was the first time that we've done it, so like there's gonna be a lot of learning. And honestly, even being here and just seeing you, I'm learning a lot, even just by 
you know, experiencing this with you. So it's going to be, it's a learning, it's a learning curve, right? Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm like, I, I want to say something, but I was like, the trunks wouldn't say that. You know, that's <laughs> more of a Gohan thing to say. Um, but fuck yeah, man. So as far as like on the Arab side of things, do you ever go to the Middle East? Are you like, are you in with anything over there? We were talking before, you've never been to Palestine, like Palestine, which is understandable, obviously. That goes without saying it's a fucking occupied area at this point. It's only like the people that were like born there and are like just left as refugees and got asylum somewhere else that they go back. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people that haven't been, because especially their families really grew up in Syria. They grew up in Lebanon. So it's like all their childhoods they remember Syria or Lebanon you know I have a lot of Palestinian friends who just say the Lebanese at this point because like they pretty much their parents they, their fair. family's been in Lebanon yeah. for 30 years 40 years whatever it is right yeah some people identify whatever they want it's um, yo so for me even my parents have never been to Palestine yeah like were they born in Kuwait uh, my dad was born in Syria my mom was born in Kuwait word yeah. god damn yeah man the country got fucked a long I time know. ago. When my buddy started in 1940. 1940. Like he, 19. I, I have such a good, intimate understanding of how it went down I, since his podcast. But yeah, man, it's like people got displaced a long time ago. It's crazy to still be like, oh, I'm Palestinian. But it's like my parents weren't even born there. You know what I mean? It's like now you go there. It's just like military occupied check-ins and fucking drive. What's it called? Like uh, Checkpoints. Checkpoints and shit like that. Like, fuck. Just full army rifles around you you're like what the fuck this yeah. is crazy yeah man so it's one of those things like i think uh, for palestinians it's the blood that makes us palestinian you can be like a, you know your grandmother could just be palestinian you'd still say you're palestinian yeah yeah, right? yeah. there's a strength there you know yeah. it's kind of like italians you could have had an italian neighbor 28 years ago and you'll say i'm italian <laughs> yeah. you know italian. <laughs> people be like oh, fuck, i'm italian man i had a neighbor i was italian uh, what was I gonna say? D do you ever tell people you are Kuwaiti, or you never say that? Never, never, never. never like even, even when you were young, never, never. Really? Yeah. Uh, I know where you're going with this. I do see a lot of people who might say that, but I, for me, because it's never. like lost in the translation. It's like you, could, I could get away with this. Who's who? Even you know what I mean? I think like since we were young, like uh, our parents taught us like we're Palestinian, and it's a it's a pride thing as well, right? Yeah. As much as it's an identity thing, it's also like. You're proud to be Palestinian, so I wouldn't say anything, anything otherwise. Like even saying the term Arab was something that I recently adopted, uh, because I'd always say I'm Palestinian or Palestinian Canadian. Gotcha, gotcha. Right? You now you just step, take one step back, and just be like, I'm Arab. I'm part of this region of the world, right? Which shares a lot of culture and whatnot. Yeah, or say I'm like born in Kuwait. It does get confusing, especially when I was at the law firm. Everyone thought I was from Croatia when I told them I was Croatia. from Croatia. <laughs> Literally. Kuwait, Palestine? <laughs> cool, just Croatia. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I lived in Kuwait. Oh, Croatia. I have a, I have a friend who's from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? I know a guy who's got a cottage there. Yeah, it's A cottage. <laughs> good cottage prices out in Croatia. Croatia is actually supposed to be sick to, to visit. I forget what the, the capital is. Zagreb. But, yeah? yeah, yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be like a straight up club, like this, this Croatia, yeah, Eastern Europe, yo, the wall uh, fell. Or actually, fuck. yo, fun fact so when I uh, quit my job in the law firm, uh, I decided to go to like this peaceful trip to Croatia to figure That's my shit out. Yeah. All right? <laughs> like, they all think I'm from here, fuck it. Let's That's go. exactly, Let's why about. not? Yeah. Why not? But then I ended up being an ultra like the music festival turns out i was in the same exact week as the biggest music festival in europe so all i did was party that week that's that's, how, that's the most <laughs> lit was it lit so lit <laughs> yo that's awesome that's hilarious how did you not wouldn't all the prices like skyrocketed i think i don't, so what i did was These i went lawyers to, making this lawyer no 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 bro i was a student i don't even know was a student at that time it's a three thousand dollar flight <laughs> 800 a night it's like yeah i'll just go dude it's peak season, nah, nah. Dude. so there are two things one and something i used to love doing was i stayed at a hostel which was fucking lit oh you just meet everyone right away you don't have everyone, to find anyone everyone and then the second thing is i don't remember the prices but i remember going to jordan for a couple of days for a friend's wedding and then on the way back i was in croatia but it was sick man it was like i've never been i want to go to Croatia? I really go. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, check go to Ultra, that bro. That's next, uh, we'll do like I'm a... past that. Uh, there's no I know, I know. scenario. <laughs> there's no scenario where I'm going to uh, like electronic music festival. There's no scenario. And I like the music too. Yeah. I'm just like, I've done that thing already. You're like, you're over with. I could see myself doing a Coachella for like two or three days. Coachella would be fun. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. you know, a lot of hip hop artists and whatnot. But like, pure like, oh, gosh, yeah. God, that, 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 oh, wow. 
<laughs> you know what's funny? Like yeah. for me, when I was like young, I never did that shit. Like nothing. So like the, we were becoming lawyers. We were becoming right? lawyers. We're fucking putting in the work, bro. Yeah. Same here, man. So Ultra was like I think the second festival I've ever been to. But now I'm I, I get what you're saying. Like yeah. Being yeah. these music festivals, it's your a little ears too are bleeding. Much. Yeah. You're fucking just using porta potties and shit like yeah. that. Like yeah, it's okay. I mean, that that ship has sailed for me. You know what Not I mean? Fair. That fucking ship has sailed. <laughs> Yo, question for anybody listening right now who wants to be a lawyer. Yeah. What advice would you have for them? Don't don't get don't it. yeah exactly <laughs> don't start your own shit I'm not sending you that email I don't know you <laughs> like that <laughs> so when it comes to law I think uh, one you gotta know your why like I think that's like the most important thing because a lot of people think you you want to become a lawyer because like it pays very well there's so many things in the world that pays so much better than law so don't just do law for that uh, number two is like know that there's so many different options that are not just what they tell you at school so like that whole tunnel vision of like becoming an associate then a partner and then this and that so many of my friends it's been a couple of years now lawyers have now left law and are in you know and starting their own businesses some of them are in politics some of them you know are building their own law firms as well so there's so many different things you can do I think that's it. Fuck yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 I, it's not usually a question I ask. I'm just, you know, putting it out there. We talked a lot about this law stuff. But I asked three questions at the end, though. First one, I need to know, did you get beat growing up? Did I get beat? Did you get beat, Hanny? Oof. He was too, were you too good of a student. Don't beat him. Student. He would be a lawyer. I was going to say, I got, there's only two fights I've ever got into. It got it into when I was a kid. I'm talking more like parents beating. Oh, the parents beating. Yeah, I was yeah. like thinking, I'm like, yo, you should have seen yeah. the other guy. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, like, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, no, no. Not, no parents beating. I no like, parents? Okay. Once I remember, actually, I did get beat. You were muaddev, huh? No, no, but there was one time and I actually did deserve getting beat. Yeah. Like, what ended up happening was I went to the school. I think I was like six or seven. I went with a couple of my friends. It was past hours and we w snuck into the classrooms and we completely vandalized all of the classrooms. And we didn't know. We thought it was like, oh, no one is here. This is like, you know, like a free space. So there was like, you know, candy on the on the table and everything. We just like threw it and ate it. <laughs> These six year olds are crazy. Yeah, literally, bro. Yeah. Who and, did this? It's just candy wrappers open. It's and like, then my mom worked at that school. Oh, so imagine how much shit she got, got into. A beating. That's so a beating. That is when That's I got a, a well beating. deserved beating. That is very well deserved. On that <laughs> note, a long time ago, we we broke into a school that I didn't go to. It was a French immersion near us, and we yeah. turned all the faucets on. <laughs> we just left. And it flooded. why <laughs> it flooded it like flooded the way I don't, we just were trying to do damage that's so i don't funny. know what we were young i don't know what the fuck happened no, I get it. but uh it, the idea of doing that shit is so crazy fuck yeah. and like yo we're it's crazy man crazy. like <laughs> now it's like why the fuck would you do that that's unnecessary like it, on so many levels it seems so stupid but when you're a kid it's, it's, it's the it's, best it's the fucking best for some reason yeah uh okay second question What's something that um, we'll say Palestinians? What's something Palestinians do that you haven't seen anyone else do? Something only Palestinians do. The Palestinians do. Oof. I'm just thinking of Mohammed right now. I'm just thinking, uh, yo, oh, good show. Great brother. show, bro. Love yeah. that show. Love that yeah, show. Really if you good. haven't watched Mo on fucking Netflix, get on that and watch his specials too. He's a beast. Facts. I was going to say Zayt Zaytun. Like, yo, they, I don't know how olive they. Oil. Yeah. Olive oil. Olive yeah. oil, yeah. Like, I don't know if some people either make it or they find a way to import it or export it. I have no idea. But, like, there's always good olive oil in a Palestinian household. That's Do you I actually mean. ever carry it in a jar like that? The way never. he does it? That, I've never <laughs> seen that. That's obviously for comedic <laughs> yeah. value. But, like, the olive oil. Olive oil. And like, if you bring bad olive oil, will it be, like, a problem? Will there be, like... No, I don't think people will know that much of a difference. Okay. But except for, like, the yeah, parents. Yeah. Like, yeah. my mom will know what's good olive oil. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's so jokes. Okay, and the final question is... Uh, what was the final question, uh, Dante? Oh, yeah. Who's the butt of jokes? When, like, your parents talk shit, like, in Sudan, they say Masa, and Masa, they say Sudan, like, for Palestinians, for your family. They, Kuwaitis, like, who... When they talk shit, who do they talk shit about? Like, who's the butt of jokes? You know what I mean? Like, in terms of people? like In, in terms, terms of, like, a group of people. It's always, they, they hate on a group. Add, like, a fucking Argentinian on. It's Brazilian. Nah, bro. It's always, like, the neighboring. My guy. parents are really woke. They will never say anything like that. It's, like, pretty much every... I'm <laughs> kidding. No. I'm like, what? I'm like, I know you didn't get beat, <laughs> but damn, bro. This is... Are you even Arab? No, I but know, yeah. right? La, 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 la. I am not listening. La, 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 la.
<laughs> they're like, this guy buy, fucking gets a law firm. He's fucking. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he thinks he's big headed now, huh? Uh, but, yo, bro, we're coming up on the hour, man. How, how did that feel for you? Bro, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, man, yo, this is. I actually was trying to capture a lot of the speaking points while we were. Because last time we did like 20 minutes on your thing, but I forgot where we were even going. Uh, I just remember we were in the zone there. You guys do questions though, huh? So yeah, you had so questions, right? Had which questions. is a, which is a uh, you know when you got funding and it's a big thing, you gotta have questions. But you know what? What's what's uh, appreciated about this and what I'm like I'm gonna do next? I'm like I want it to be more conversational because it's it's more you know more engaging that way, right? I think so. I don't I know. I, yeah. What do you think, Dante? My boy's bringing that gain right back up. Um, I, I, me personally, I prefer conversational because when you're listening to a conversation, you kind of get drawn into it, right? Whereas if it's just an interview, it's like they ask a question, and then even in your own mind, you're gonna answer it yourself. Yeah. So you, you like you stop paying attention a little bit to be like, yeah, how would I answer? Yeah. It? Exactly. But when it's a conversation and it's just flowing, you don't know where it's going. You have no idea, so you have no choice but to pay attention to it. Fuck yeah. Conversations but, are fun. Yo, yeah, yeah, and on that, this is the first he's been Dante's been producer here for probably ten plus episodes now. We just mic'd them up. What's crazy is we've had that mic in that basket <laughs> the whole fucking time. It's been there for months. Right? Yeah, we should, oh, yeah. Get, you, we we should get you a mic. mic. Yeah, yeah, but like I, I wanted to get you a stand and stuff. But uh, but yo, Henny, this has been a pleasure. As Love always, it. what I do at the end is look into the camera. Okay. Tell the people where to find you. Tell the people. Uh, Anyone who needs you for, uh, you know, law stuff and anyone who wants to check out uh, Yalla, where to find it and when to expect it. All right. All right, homies. So find me on Instagram at Hany Dejani or go to Yalla Let's Talk and at Yalla Let's Talk. In terms of uh, law firm, it's Emerge Law. Fuck, I can just go like a whole link yeah, tree, by the way. No, no, no. <laughs> do like, link tree? I should get one. I don't, but I will get but one. But I, I always put in the description, I'll yeah. always put uh, your link. So what's the best single? Is it your Instagram? Is it your website? Like For me, yeah. go to my Instagram. Go to my personal Instagram, Hanny Dejani, uh, because then you're going to find like Yellow List Stock, Emerge Law, everything. Okay, so hit him up for Emerge Law. Yeah. Check out uh, Yellow List Stock. How many episodes in season one? It's going to be eight episodes. Sick. When does it come out? So far, it's going to be in October. Okay, and will it be all platforms? All platforms. Okay, well, look out for that. I did an episode, and it was a fucking blast. What episode number was I? You're going to be, for now, you're going to be number two. I'm episode two. Episode okay, two. I was waiting for episode one, but hey, you know what? <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. But yo, check this guy out. Check out Yellow Let's Talk. It's actually fucking sick. I'm actually going to check out the other episodes, too, just to see, because I ran into one person on the way in and out, but it was also quick. I couldn't really talk to anybody. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that coming out. Yeah. From my end, uh, if you're in Toronto, October 21st, come out to the next Force Diversity Comedy Show and go to AbbasWahab.com for tickets uh, for the National Comedy Tour. We're hitting up Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. We'll be in New Brunswick, Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia. As of right now, we're trying to lock in some Winnipeg and stuff, but nothing yet. Uh, brother, this has been a pleasure, my guy. Thank my you man. for coming on. Appreciate you. I'd love to have you back at some point, huh? Always, man. And likewise, like. Yeah, get me back on, yeah. bro. Get me back on. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much for tuning in. Support the show directly at patreon.com slash the immigrant section. If you liked it, enjoyed, leave a comment, hit like, subscribe, do the whole thing for the algorithm. Shout out to my boy Dante. If you need uh, any sort of stuff in the GTA, hit up uh, Person One Productions. Person One, right? Uh, you can just yell it. At, at Person One Prod. Okay, well, there you go. Hit the him up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, until next time, thanks for tuning in. Your boy, Boss Wap, signing out. Peace. Um.